Greetings to all melanated people all around the world. Really a joy and a pleasure me being here, embracing the sun. You know, many people in my country, the sun has become so common to them that it means nothing to them. It reminds me of a story I once saw of a poet who would have written about the sea. But he would have never seen the sea. So he saved and saved until he could have taken a journey to visit the sea, somewhere where the sea was. And on and, and his way towards the sea, he met an old man smoking his pipe. And he said to him, how beautiful the sea is and, and so on. And he started exalting the sea to this old man because he was so excited. And the old man took two pulls on his pipe, spit on the ground, and said for 40 years, I've been living back right next to the sea. And I don't see anything special about the sea. You see, you have lived so long by the sea that it became common to him. And I've come to realize that we who live in the tropics down here are living in these parts because we were told that we're living in a in tall world country and so on and never had a true understanding of the tall world. It's really the wall of the true family, the mother, the fa father, and the children. Okay? Whereby all of the heavens shining down upon us and whereby we walk in bare feet and bare back and so on and all of these things are blessing cooking and wood fire the blessing and so when they, when they brought things like television and so on they had us to look away from the things of nature so I want to point you back to those good old days where we were being a hundred percent human and not being these people um, being of a mindset of greed and Americanism and Caucasianism. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, I want to speak to you on a very important subject. And anyone who's listened to me who have ever been a Christian or ever been in the church system, uh, man, I should say all melanated people. All somewhere along the line, when you went to school, they had us singing all of these Jesus songs. How they were singing uh, Mary had a little lamb. And, and Peter was a fisherman fishing in the river and so on. And give us um, an understanding of some literal story. Okay, and make us believe that the Bible is literal. So all of us would have had that brainwash experience. Okay? But they hate the truth about faith to us. So I'm going to speak a little bit on faith and I'm going to go to a, a scripture whereby it spoke about uh, having faith as a mustard seed. And many times the so-called preachers will, will speak about the mustard seed as the smallest thing or the tiniest thing. But they never realize it is really speaking about thoughts. <laughs> Because they've never gone into the world of the invisible. And they never understand what faith really means. And many of them quote it and they could never give the right explanation. Now I'm going to quote the very scripture let's quote to you. And I think it's from Hebrews 11. Where he says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now if that is not magic, well there is no magic again. And when you use the word magic... <laughs> To religious people just get frightened because they be kept by fear and they have the wrong understanding of magic. Basically, magic is just taking something from the unseen world to the seen world. Okay? And that is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Bring something from the unseen world to the seen world. Now, and everything in this world, it was for us to talk. It was for us to imagine. And that's how it comes here. So everything you see around you is an expression of the spiritual world. So until it's been expressed to us, then we understand the fulfillment of the prophecy. Then we understand creation. 
And why it is said in Matthew 6, 33, that you must seek first the kingdom and the righteousness of the God within yourself, because the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 21. And that you must not look outside yourself and have anyone to have you to think and look outside of yourself. Because the power is in you. The magic elixir is in you. And that you will discover the secret of creation. That's why he said all these things will be added unto you. But you must believe in your own thoughts. You must believe that thoughts become things. You must believe that you are creating your own reality. And you must believe that the only world that is coming to an end is your world. So if you build a world around stealing, lying, envy, malice, jealousy, sometime we'll, there, there's a time when that world will actually come to an end because you will no longer be here, you'll be on the other side. And when you die in that consciousness, you'll take that same consciousness over there. And I'm speaking from experience. Because I would have gone over many times and meet people and they're still in the same consciousness, though they are younger. So even if they die 90, when you meet them, they're around 1920. Okay? So, faith as a mustard seed. Now, when you speak about faith as a mustard seed, it is teaching you the law of sowing and reaping. It is teaching you the law of multiplication. It is teaching you true agriculture. That it is not without, it is within. And as it is without, so is it within. And that the garden of Eden is your mind. And that's where all you should be sowing your seed with your righteous seed. That's why it is also said that a sow went out to sow seed. And some fell among thorns and some fell among stony grounds. But some fell on gold grounds. And they bring forth some 50 folds and from 60 folds and so on and 90 folds and 100 folds. And I know what I'm doing here. It is not a waste of time. I know what I'm doing here. Many all around the world will benefit. Because I know for sure that the divine law of reproduction can never be proven wrong. And it is said that this mustard seed will become a massive tree. It will become a giant of a tree. And many people read in the Bible in the days of Noah where there were many giants. And many people see all these financial Caucasian giants. And they never realize they are giants. Financial giants. Controlling the minds of the people through, the, through um, economics. And so, for we to combat these giants, we have to learn to sow our mustard seed. And when one has been sent to you, I'm speaking from experience, he's not bringing a script, he's not bringing theory, he's not bringing intellect. He, he, know, he can't speak grammar too well. <laughs> he, he's not eloquent. <laughs> it's to invest. Invest your time, your thoughts, your energy towards such teaching, towards such enlightenment coming to you. Embrace the solar, embrace the sun. Because it is the only one in whom the sun has awakened in can activate your soul. Because people become so educated, they will spell soul as S-O-U-L. But 
des SOL. <laughs> when you understand how all is energy and vibration, and we are electrical and magnetic being. And when I wake within myself, that same power that came through my skull became magnetic and held me up like this. And it's like if there was a call from me hooked to a call to that great magnet. It was my solar plexus. And so my brother and my sisters, I could not have been here speaking to you had it been for those experiences that I would have experienced. So, so that mustard seed, do an exercise, see what you want in your mind's eye, and all reflect on the one who's bringing the message to you, and say to yourself, I believe that he has come to the ninth power. I believe what he said he experienced. I'm telling my brother and my sisters, you would not be made ashamed. So go ahead and sow your seed. Not in a Pentecostal ministry. Not in these televangelist ministry who's telling you if you don't give them money, their ministry can, can continue. But sow the real seed in the real earth by taking hold and taking note of a true message that is coming to you. That's why I say you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And as you believe, so shall it be done unto you. With that being said, my brother and my sisters, I've given you enough for you to sow that seed into the soil that will multiply and multiply and multiply, which is right within yourself. So with that, I want to give you my sign as usual. The sun sign, the sign of power, the sign of dominion and authority, the sign of prosperity, the sign of fullness, the sign of abundance, the sign of Solomon. Peace, love you, I'm out.